Hey, this is Skid with you again, and here I am with a video to explain where to find, how to install, and then how to play the Caves of Jenks Rathra, my super great video game straight out of 1985. Well, a little bit more to it than that, but let's get on with it. If uh, you click on any of the Caves of Jenks Rathra links underneath any of my videos, it will bring you right to this website. You can have a read through and see what's going on, but the important thing is this release version 1.3. If you click on that, it'll do an automatic download to bring you the caves.zip. Save that file and bring that to wherever you like. I'm just putting it on my desktop for now. Now that's a zip file, so we'll have to extract it. Actually, let me bring that over just a bit, make sure you can see. So we'll extract to there. Okay, it's got us all nice and extracted. Let's bring that to that and get rid of it. Okay, now if I open up this folder here, you can see that this is all the goodies that come in the download. All of these file folders are important to keep all together with the CavesEXE file because it draws upon these to make everything work. Now it all happens to be sitting in a folder called Caves right now, but that's not important. Put them wherever you want, it doesn't matter, just make sure all of this, this is together. This is the actual program itself, the caves.exe. Click and run that and you're off to the races. Now this is what will happen as soon as you do it. You'll get this, oh my god, oh my god, it's just a unrecognized app. Do whatever it takes and then go through this too. And then it'll finally let you run the program. So there we are, okay? Let's just move that off the screen for now and just talk a little bit about uh, some more of this. So um, this basic user guide here is extremely valuable and important. Uh, all free, it all comes with it. I would give a good read of that before you start playing around in the caves because there's a lot of information that you're going to need because if you go down without that you're just going to die right away and then it's not going to be any fun. So have a good look through the basic user guide and it'll set you off on the good path. I've included a couple other things in here because uh, when I developed this, it was a little while ago, I did it on a Windows 7 platform with, uh, with uh, Visual C++ 2010. So if you're running this on Windows 10, you may come into an issue where it says you're missing this uh, dynamic link library file, this MS uh, VCR 100 file. That's no big deal. I've included it in the download here. Take a look in the readme file. Actually, let's see if we can open that up for you. And you'll see that, uh, I think you can just see it on that window. Uh, put that DLL file either in the Windows System 32 or the SysWow 64, depending on whether you're running 32 or 64-bit uh, system. And that's good to go. You do that and then uh, you can solve that little problem. If there's any other problems that come up, especially Windows 11, I haven't taken a look at that yet, please uh, use that email link on that website and let me know. Okay, so this is what you find when you come into the game itself, and there doesn't look to be a lot going on because there isn't. There's This is where the uh, party members show up, and there's nobody there right now. So you could try to do any of these things, but it'll go, hey man, there's no one here to go into the dungeon. So to take a look at what these different things do, well, you can click and play around, and also you can read about all of this in the, uh, in the basic user guide. Uh, we'll draw your attention to Flynn's Tavern here. You've heard of some stories coming out of that if you've been paying attention to my channel. Uh, but to get this game started, we need some people in the party. So going over here, we could make new characters if we wanted to, but I'm going to let you explore that for yourself and see all the fun that's involved with that. I'm just going to bring in uh, some guys that we have sitting around. Now, this sample party is sitting there on the download, so it's a way of, for you to just get at it right away. If you go further down on that website page and you're getting frustrated because you can't get started, 
This is the sample party further along. We'll, we'll show you them, they're a little bit higher level, so if you uh, need a little bit of help to get going, that, that's uh, what they're for. But let's start with these guys and open them up. And this is what, uh, these are the same guys that you saw on the, on the website. So now I've got uh, my party in here. And the party, uh, what I can do is if I want to see what any of these guys are up to, I can just double click on them and it brings up that data for that party member. So for example, this is Shrek, he's an ogre. Oh, imagine that. And it just, it's all your basic Dungeons and Dragons stats. Once you read the manual, you can see all of it, but anybody who's played any D&D is familiar with a lot of this stuff, so this is no, no big surprise. If you want to change their order, you just hold them down and move them like that. Do whatever you want to, to move them around. So this is, like I say, a very, very basic party and uh, some thief, or a thief, a couple mages, a cleric, and some fighters, and off we go. We're all ready to go. Uh, we're not really ready to go because they're not armed very well. Yeah, he doesn't have anything on him whatsoever, but let's just show you what it's like to go down. Now, when you, uh, if you are going to play with this party to start with, yeah, they, they do have a little bit of money, I think. Let's take a look. So you got some uh, gold sitting there, yeah, 46 gold. So they can pool their gold be between them. I would arm these two front guys with something, or else they're going to be in a serious lot of trouble. Uh, I should mention, yes, there is a right-click menu, and you can see that Tex and Edna's store is a place to go to buy stuff. And there's all kinds of other things you can do. I won't go into that right now, because that's for you to explore. But let's take a look at what the caves looks like. So down we go. Okay, so a little bit of history for you. Uh, the Caves of Jenks Rathra is based on this old school uh, Dungeons and Dragons game for, uh, that first showed up around 1983 called Oubliette, and it was written by a fellow by the name of Jim Schweiger, who originally did it for a mainframe at uh, University of Chicago and then uh, developed it for microcomputers. And, the case of where I got to it was a Commodore 64. I really, really loved that game. So later on, I uh, got uh, down and busy and I recreated the game, the look and feel of the game a lot, but on a Windows platform. So you can see that you're not just sitting or typing on an old keyboard. You can actually use the mouse to move stuff around. I actually got in touch with Jim Schweiger and uh, let him know about what I was doing and if he was okay with this. And once he uh, found out the total idea behind this, he was he was very enthused and we're actually quite good friends to this day. He's a fantastic fellow. Anyway, uh, so if you've ever played Oubliette from back in the day, or if you uh, get a hold of an old Commodore 64 uh, emulator and uh, dig it up, because it's out there, you just Google all that stuff, you'll see it looks a lot like this. And in fact, the very first part of level one that we're on here is exactly like the old level one of Oubliette, so a little bit of nostalgia for you. Okay, so if you want to move around in the dungeon, we can click on these things. I can click a W and move us forward. Or, you can't see my hand, but I can press W on the keyboard as well, and that moves me forward. So if we walk around here, inevitably we're going to run into something, and when we run into something, we're going to have to fight it. And because we're not very well armed, we're going to probably die. But let's take a little look and uh, walk around a little bit. So I'll click these so that you can see what I'm doing instead of just, uh, instead of just uh, moving with my keyboard. So this turns me to the right. I move forward again to the right. Usually there's some guys in here. Now all these dunge all these uh, monsters show up uh, um, all at random. There is no particular uh, place for these monsters to be. But there is a few things down here that are particular. Boy, this is one of those few times when I don't run into anybody. That's okay. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you can walk freely, but sometimes not so much. Well, let's take a look down here and see what's going on going down over here. Oh, 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 there we go. We have run into two dwarves. Okay, well, what's Shrek going to do? Uh, again, you can click on these uh, buttons right here, or you can use the keyboard. So I just usually press uh, F on the keyboard, but I'll press uh, F here to show you. Shrek missed. Oh, no. Oh, Red killed it. Good. Uh, Guido can't do much, so uh, we'll just do that. Subotai can try and control them. Nope. And the amazing Kreskin, let's see what he can do. Let's try and cast a spell. Uh oh, you can't see that. Let's bring that down. Uh, 
it, it, we, we lived. Okay, well that's great. So okay, so you don't see anybody die. All right, that, that, that's fine. That's basically kind of what combat looks like uh, when we're doing this. So let's see if we can actually get out of here and take you back up. So I just turned right around, come back here, and up I go. And it says, these are stairs going up. Yes, I do wish to take them. And now I'm outside here. So yes, of course, that was a very, very simple little sojourn into the caves and nothing happened. We didn't actually get any treasure because sometimes when you fight those guys, you get treasure at the end of it. We, nobody even took any hits and nobody went up a level. But <laughs> So that's kind of funny. So usually a lot more happens than that. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. Go down there and you'll see be ready, be armed, be armored, because uh, it's very dangerous. And at the very beginning, I would stay very, very close to those uh, stairs going up so that in case your guys do go up a level or you do get some treasure, you can get them out of there. So I want to show you something really quick just to give you an idea of what's going on here. I'm going to load up that uh, other party just because I want to go a little bit further into the caves there. So you can see that uh, these guys are a little bit higher level, and not only that, they're armed nice. So Shrek, for example, has a short sword and leather armor. And my mages here are a little bit higher level, so now they've actually got five first and three second level spells. So uh, we're, we're a little bit better prepared to, uh, to do what we need to do. I just want to uh, indicate to you that it's not just a hack and slash Dungeons and Dragons game go down to the bottom levels and, and, and by the way it doesn't end at level 10 uh, this one has 11 I, I, I know some of you old school guys get that reference so uh, yeah down down we go and in, in the caves here there is a very very large puzzle to solve at the end not a large puzzle a very complex puzzle to solve so you need to pay attention you need to figure out what's going on and part of the puzzle is that as you go down you will find that on each level there's a number of inscriptions on the wall and that that's quite a bit different than the original Ubliet game this is my uh, adding to it and these inscriptions are all part of a three-part story that all comes together at the very end and is part of your puzzle to solve it that uh, tells a complete story. So it's not just a not just a D&D game and uh, it's not even just a story. It's actually quite a bit of philosophy in here. So getting to the end is is quite quite the uh, adventure. So anyway, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So take these guys down. I'm going to turn right around. So I'll just turn to the right twice and go backwards here cuz I know where the inscriptions are in here. So I'll take you to one. We'll go down there. Oh, we gotta fight some guys. Okay, let's fight these orcs. See, we're doing a little bit better this well, kind of. Uh, Guido won't do anything. Super tides control. Oh, oh, good, good, good. Oh, we did really well. Good. Kreskin. I don't think you can see all my spells. It just kind of goes off the screen a little bit, but I'll click that for you. Oh, not so good with that one. Let's try again. Let's put that down for you. Okay, so let's uh, keep going. We gotta go down here, 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 here. We're almost there. Oh, we met more guys. Uh, okay, let's fight these guys off. Fight these guys off. Okay, almost, we're not doing so. Okay, okay, okay. One more. We'll use every spell we've got to make this happen. As you can see, Oh, look! Good, 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 good. I get to show you what it's like to uh, get some treasure. So, we got a treasure box. You could just open it. Any of these guys can open it. But it might be trapped. So, we could try and disarm it. You do have a thief with you. He can try and disarm it. Or, uh, Guido, who is a cleric, can try and cast this spell, which does the disarming. Let's see if we can disarm it with uh, Super Tide. We found 150 gold. Yeah, we're rocking it. And you can see my fighters are back now because they're not uh, charmed by the other party. And uh, we're good to go now. All right, let's move one more forward here finally. And that's what I mean by an inscription on the wall. So as you can see, it's part of a picture and there's a letter there. I don't know what that could all mean. Hmm. Anyway, you will see that there's a uh, an entire story here and it's a story in three parts. 
and I won't uh, let you see all of it. You got to go figure it out for yourself. And this is just one of very, very many. But these kind of inscriptions are what you're going to find when you walk down there, and that's all part of the puzzle. Now, instead of making you wait for going all the way back and dealing with that, let's just port the whole thing here. Yes. Doosh. And when you abort like that, you get rid of the, the party, but that's fine. We could always get them back. And yes, I lost the 150 gold, but it doesn't matter. I've played the game through about three times, so there you go. Uh, doing a lot of beta testing, I might add. And that's the basics parts of, uh, of the game. Okay, just a couple last things to wrap this all up. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of work went into making sure this game is playable. And not only that, but... One of the things that I took from Oubliette that I really, really enjoyed is the fact that when you uh, level up, when you uh, get promoted, it's not based on how many experience points you necessarily have. It's random. Now, it's more uh, likely if uh, you're a lower level going up against a higher level monster, but it's completely random, which means, ooh, it's, it's one of those random reward things with the brain, which just makes you want to play more and more all the time. It's, it's a lot of fun. I, I quite enjoy it. Uh, just like Oubliette. All right, uh, people have asked, <laughs> especially Pop, why do you have such a crazy name for this game? What is Jenks Rathra all about? Well, really, it just kind of goes back to high school, actually. Back in the day when I was playing Dungeons & Dragons, I had an entire map of a continent. And uh, that map uh, furnishes all of the creative settings, not only for the Caves of Jenks Rathra here, but the stories that I'm writing, including the Rillian Raven. So, I don't know, I was 16, I really liked consonants, and this was a dragon's cave that I came up with, and that's where the story gets based from. So, yep, we gotta live with Jenks Rathra. It is, just is what it is. Uh, one last thing, um, if you keep looking down the website, you will see that... Um, I actually have a tactical guide uh, as well. Now, you can completely play the game no problem with the uh, basic user manual. It has everything you need. The tactical guide is more for the guys who are into, you know, how, how did I do the coding on it? Not like the specific coding, but what are some of the variables that go into the different races, the different classes, how stuff works, the more specifics of the statistics. So uh, if you're interested in that, um, Everything is totally free, but for a donation of $25, I will send you the tactical guide. So I got to put that in there somewhere. You don't do, do what you like and play with it, distribute, do whatever you like. Uh, but uh, the tactical guide is available there. And I actually have sent that to a few people. Some people have been very interested in uh, seeing how it actually works. So one last little uh, plug for that. Anyway, um, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you enjoy playing the caves. Enjoy the game. Take care. 